All right, hello everyone. <laughs> I'm gonna wait a couple minutes for uh, people to join in. But uh, for those of you who are already here, this is the listening party for the new album. So uh, I have a copy over on the piano here. Give me one second. <laughs> Today, was the official celebration of the release of this record, Kites and Strings, which is my third album. And the first with a very special new project that I've been lucky to tour with for the past, uh, well, not tour with, but perform with for the past year. And we were in the studio last year to record and... Uh, <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Oh, so glad you're here. Oh, man. For those who don't know, Dev in the chat is my amazing brother who did pretty much everything on this album. Uh, mix, master, tracking, help with graphic design was my sounding board when I was like, was that take good? I don't know. So much love. I'm, I'm so happy. And there will be many... Many thanks being given out throughout this whole thing, but uh, I'm, I'm so excited to share this music and I'm going to wait for one or two more minutes and then get started with the first track, but I'll talk a little bit about the project. This is called The Nebula Project. It's a sextet album with some special guests and the sextet is trumpet saxophone and bass clarinet and guitar. I double on piano and accordion. I'm particularly excited because this is the first of my albums to feature me on accordion. And then Marty Jaffe on bass and Ben Swag on drums. So that's the core. And then you're gonna hear from some guests on trombone, vibraphone and other tracks. I'll uh, kind of walk you through as we go. But it's a... Uh, album of mostly original compositions. Some are, you know, conceived many years ago. I mean, one of the tracks I wrote the first version of when I was in high school. So this is a culmination of a long time of writing and a long time of uh, kind of putting, putting this music together, rearranging it, editing it. <laughs> Hey, Dad. Hey, Janine. Good to see you. <laughs> so, um, you're going to be hearing a lot of original music and some of my favorite musicians in New York City. I mentioned Marty and Ben already. Wayne Tucker's on trumpet. Jasper Dutz is on sax and bass clarinet. And Raphael Rosa on guitar. And, uh... For me, this album is kind of the album I've always wanted to make. I feel like as a composer with the larger group, I get to explore a large range of timbral possibilities, some small group stuff, some larger sections. I have all these blending opportunities between the accordion and the horns or the piano and guitar. The guitar can be more electric or acoustic, you know, there's percussion as well. There's so many possibilities. So, uh, and this album is also an opportunity for me to explore some world music influences in addition to the jazz that I do that have been really special for me. So without any further ado, I'll start with the first track. This first track is called Cedar Place. And it's a tribute in a certain sense to a wonderful pianist and composer named Cedar Walton. This is a track I wrote maybe four or five years ago. The form is loosely based around Cedar Walton's composition, Bolivia. And you'll hear some transitions from Latin to swing, which you hear uh, in that piece as well. But... Probably if I didn't tell you, you never would have made that connection. It's a very different than that, but just in terms of the uh, ethos of the piece, it's inspired by that. Hope you enjoy.
All right, Cedar Place, and you heard from Wayne Tucker on the trumpet and Jasper Dutes on the saxophone on that one, as well as some bass clarinet, low rumbles, and uh, I actually played both the piano part and the accordion part on that one. It's one of the only ones that I overdubbed a part. That one, and later you'll hear Bright Above Us, which is a massive one with almost all the guest artists featured as well. But yeah, this first track, I recorded the piano part first and then recorded the accordion part on top of that. Later on, you'll hear some other pieces with both piano and accordion on it, but my friend Jeremy is uh, playing piano. So uh, we'll get to those ones later. It's so good to see everyone. Thanks so much, Bruce, for tuning in. Thanks so much, Jenny. Oh man, it means so much that you all are here. And uh, I'm so, so excited to share this music. Of course, there will be some kind of CD release concert with the band live at some point. My uh, thinking right now is that will happen in December through the wonderful Jazz Club Smalls and their live stream series that also has some limited live attendance, but... I'm still finalizing a date with them, so stay tuned for this. But in this time when we're all long distance, it's still a really special thing for me to be able to mark the occasion of the official release. And this is the first time I've done anything like this, listening to the music together. So I'm so glad that you all are joining and can't wait to share the rest. I'm going to try not to get off on a roll talking too much in between unless people have questions about the music. But... Uh, as we go, I'll sprinkle in all the things that I want to say, thanking everybody who's been part of this record. And I also uh, posted some thanks preliminary in the, in the uh, description of this video as well. Thank you so much. Hey, Babs, good to see you. Thanks so much. So the second piece you're going to hear is another original composition entitled Kites and Strings. It's the title track. The title is... Uh, courtesy of my brother as well. I told you he did everything in this record. <laughs> and it is really appropriate because my mom took this beautiful picture that became the cover photo and the back photo, which you're going to see the back of the album on this next one. And the title of this track and this picture just went so beautifully together. And I wanted to title the album that because of the whole package of that. So... This one is called Kites and Strings. It's in 7-4 for any musically inclined people watching. And I, uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm so glad. <laughs> it's one of my favorites as well on the record. In fact, uh, the people at ASCAP were just asking me uh, which one should they uh, feature in their playlist, and I told them this one. <laughs> But it's in 7-4, and my goal with this was to have something in an odd meter that doesn't feel like it's in an odd meter, where the, it just kind of flows, and it's ephemeral and spacious, but you still have a kind of pulse, and you don't even realize that it's in an odd meter. So, you know, Zweig, as we've played this, Ben Zweig, the drummer, really helped me kind of... Uh, solidify the groove on this and it's come to a place that I really love. You're going to hear me soloing on accordion on this and you'll also hear from a wonderful friend and special guest Jake Chapman on the vibraphone and Wayne again on trumpet. <laughs> Thank you. 
Kites and Strings, the second track, the title track, one of my absolute favorites on the record. And uh, it's such a pleasure for me to get to perform and record with this larger group because I get to include so many of my friends in this project and I just get to sit back and listen to them make beautiful music and turn these compositions into something greater than what I, what I could have imagined. So thank you to all the musicians on this. I mean, they're all just incredible. Beautiful. Hope you all are enjoying. Feel free to uh, chat any questions you might have about any of these pieces, about the record. You know, this is an uh, informal space and I, I'd love to hear hear anybody's thoughts or if you know if anybody's curious about any kinds of inspirations that i don't touch on in this you know go for it the next track is called halfway to wonderland an original composition that dates back one of the earliest i think bright above us is the one that had its origins the earliest of any of the tracks but halfway to wonderland probably closely follows i think that it I wrote the bare bones of the first and second section before I went to college. And uh, it's just one of those beautiful moments where the composition just continues to grow. A couple of years later, I wrote another section. A couple of years after that, I arranged it for the group. A couple of years after that, I added this uh, kind of what we call a shout chorus, a kind of unison solo section. And the arrangement just kept growing and developing and uh, turning into what it is. So I'm really happy with where it ended up. It's a kind of funky piece. And the title uh, comes from just a kind of, uh, you know, tongue-in-cheek joke when I was on the Boston subway system. The last stop on one of the trains I was on is Wonderland. I was getting off halfway there. And I thought that the title was just a very evocative phrase halfway to wonderland so uh hope you enjoy this one you'll hear solos from me on piano on this one and then from jasper dudes on bass clarinet and uh then you'll hear a short bass solo from marty jaffe and a drum solo at the end from our wonderful drummer ben swag <laughs>
All right, halfway to Wonderland. <laughs> Thank you so much, Alma. Yeah, that's a great picture. Uh, David took that picture in the studio, and uh, then uh, Mom edited it. It's a family affair, and uh, really happy we got that photo for the cover. It has almost everyone, including Jeremy, the guest pianist that you hear on the next track. Sadly, missing Sam Chess and Jake Chapman, the other two guests, but uh, people were in and out all day. This was a very regimented thing. You know, New York musicians, uh, especially pre-lockdown, are very busy, so it was like, okay, this person is teaching at this time, so we'll get their songs in at this time, then get them out, this person will come. Wayne, the trumpet player, had to be in Washington, D.C. the night of the second date for a gig. So we got all of his uh, tracks recorded by noon on the second day of recording. It was pretty amazing how it all kind of worked out. I really owe it to how just on it all the musicians were and, uh, you know, Dev in the studio and, uh, you know, the people at Samurai Hotel as well who helped Dev. You know, everyone just knew exactly what they needed to do, and we got it in and out, and yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was a hectic two days, but it was crazy. But I'm glad in the meantime we did get that picture, because sometimes I forget to get the pictures of the musicians. <laughs> in any case, Halfway to Wonderland. The next one that you're going to hear is a piece that I wrote based on a melody from a symphony by Brahms. Um, and uh, this is from Brahms' uh, Opus 98, Symphony 4, Movement 1. It's uh, the beginning leitmotif that you hear at the uh, top of the first movement, and about 12 bars that's almost verbatim from that that I took and just arranged uh, for the band, and then the second, a little more than half of the piece is original edition, kind of the way I saw the melody continuing in a jazz context. And the twist I put on it is that whereas the original symphony is in 4-4, this is in 5-4. And I just thought that the melody fit really nicely in this meter. It's a little bit uh, longer and maybe less driving, more contemplative. And the way we've arranged it is uh, hopefully filling that role as well. The accordion is heavily featured on this, and the horns are mostly background parts until the very end of the piece when they take the melody. You're going to hear from our wonderful guest pianist, Jeremy Corrin, a pianist that I went to college with really incredible player and of course one of the great joys of playing the accordion as much as I do now is I get to play with all of my favorite pianists. As a pianist we don't get to do two pianos very often but uh, you know on the accordion I get to play with pianists all the time and it's really fun. So Jeremy takes the first solo and then you'll hear an extended accordion solo. <laughs> Thank you. 
The motif from Brahms, Symphony 4, Movement 1, Opus 98. Thank you so much, Lynn. Thank you, Dad. Thank you for those beautiful words. It's one of my favorites on the on the album as well. And uh, it's uh, it's funny. Whenever I hear this, I always think about my uh, wonderful neighbor in my building, uh, Remy, who, when he saw it performed live at the... Uh, Catano recently, the show that Bruce was mentioning, I had so much fun there. Thank you, Bruce, for those kind words. But when Remy heard this at the uh, Catano, he said that I made Brahms sound very Jewish, <laughs> which I thought was really funny. Uh, so I always think about that with this piece. But I do think the accordion has a really uh, beautiful, beautiful sound with, uh, with this piece. So... Uh, <laughs> thank you so much and uh, thank you so much Michael I, I really appreciate you tuning in all right continuing on with more original music I, I'm so happy the first five tracks of this album are all original that's the first album I can say that about and uh, it's just a testament to all of the compositions I had storing up waiting for the right opportunity to present them <laughs> but this actually uh, fight or flight which is the next track this is uh, probably the most, re yeah, definitely the most recent composition. I wrote this only about two or three months before we went into the recording studio. And speaking of the Klezmer vibes, uh, I, I wrote it kind of with this Klezmer band in mind that I play with called Klezmataz, led by a wonderful violinist named Ben Sutton. And right after I kind of wrote this, the band went on hiatus for a bit. And uh, so I kind of reimagined the piece for this new sextet. It has a Middle Eastern or Klezmer kind of flavor to it. And it has this repeated accordion pattern going on throughout all the melody. And on this one, you're going to hear Ben Zweig, our wonderful drummer, with some overdubs on Dumbek, which is a Middle Eastern percussion instrument as well as uh, Kashishi, it's like a shaker. And uh, you're going to hear solos from our wonderful trumpet player, again, Wayne Tucker, as well as the first solo on the album by our wonderful guitarist, Rafael Rosa. Hope you enjoy, fight or flight. <laughs>
Fight or Flight, one of the shorter tracks on the album, uh, all things considered. It is a jazz album, so these tracks uh, do stretch out as uh, the musicians improvise. But uh, yeah, I, I'm really glad you like that one, Janine. <laughs> and yes, Maggie Ann, beautiful trumpet. Wayne is uh, one of my dear friends from a long time. Uh, one of Deb's closest friends too, you know. Somebody who used to play a lot with the person I studied piano with growing up, uh, whose name is Roy Asaf. And uh, so Wayne actually recorded one of my compositions when I was 16 that ended up winning an award. And so, you know, since, since I was 16, I've, I've known him and uh, always loved his playing. And it's so uh, rewarding to now be at a point where I can uh, have him in the band, hire him and, you know, just get to hear him do his thing on the music. He is incredible. Beautiful. We've reached the halfway point of the listening party. I hope everyone's enjoying themselves. Again, as I mentioned earlier, feel free to, you know, any reactions, questions, comments. I'm, I'm, I'm just so enjoying listening together with all of you. It makes me feel like even though I'm releasing this in the middle of uh, social distancing, I can still have a celebration together and... As I mentioned earlier, there will be an official live concert to celebrate the CD release sometime in December. I will have more info on the exact date on that as the weeks go on, but the preliminary date I think is December 6th. So hopefully that will hold, but it might change a little bit. So I'm holding off saying for sure that that's when it's going to be. But that will happen and we'll have the whole band assembled live when that happens. So I'm very excited for that. And uh, in YouTube and Facebook, I wrote a long description with some uh, more info about the album as well as some links if you want to listen to this after this. I, this album will be available on all the major streaming sites. It is available starting today. I just checked, uh, you know, Spotify and YouTube music and all of that this morning and it's all up there. So I'm really excited. And uh, if you feel like you want to purchase the album instead, it's also available on Amazon, on uh, Apple Music slash iTunes, whatever it is these days. And uh, all of the major retailers. So. I'm really excited to get to share this album. But yeah, it's available on all the streaming. And if you like it and want to continue listening to it, feel free, go on. And, uh, you know, I would really love that. <laughs> Beautiful. All right, enough about that. We're going to go on and hear some more music. So the first five tracks on the album were original compositions. The next two are going to be arrangements that I did. Um, so the first one is... I guess you can consider the only jazz standard on the album. It's not one that jazz musicians necessarily play frequently, but it is one that I think many jazz musicians know. This is Leonard Bernstein's composition somewhere from the musical West Side Story. And it's an arrangement that I first arranged for trio a long time ago. I had this uh, idea with the drummer, Ben Zweig, who we go back probably 10 years almost at this point performing together on a regular basis. I mean, I'm so lucky that I have people that I have that kind of connection with performing with me on this album. But we had this idea for a project which would celebrate the Jewish American songbook composers, among them Leonard Bernstein. And uh, so I made this arrangement for the trio and over time it uh, morphed and I orchestrated it for the larger group the, the sextet, gave the melody to the accordion instead of the piano for the A sections and the B section is, you know, the horn section. I love the being able as a arranger to play with the different textures, you know, some small band, some larger group all together. So uh, you'll hear all of that on this arrangement of somewhere. Hope you enjoy.
somewhere. And I forgot to mention, you heard on that one from yours truly on accordion, as well as Wayne Tucker again on trumpet, Jasper Dutes on bass clarinet, and my good friend Jeremy Corrin playing the piano underneath all of that. So uh, that was another one that Jeremy was featured on. I forgot to mention that, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'm so I'm so grateful to all the musicians who who played so beautifully on this. I uh, not used to uh, being able to just sit back and listen in my uh, usual playing as the pianist. Uh, we have a pretty active role often in jazz. But uh, I remember in the studio, you know, just listening to uh, Wayne and Jasper taking their solos, sitting with the accordion and just relaxing and listening to it and enjoying it so much and uh, having a similar experience now. Thank you all so much for that. <laughs> Bass clarinet is an amazing instrument. Uh, I think that I often joke with interviewers that... Uh, I'm trying to rehabilitate the reputation of the accordion, uh, <laughs> you know, is in jazz at least, because it's such an under, appreciated, underutilized instrument in the context of jazz. And the bass clarinet, while it doesn't have any kind of negative connotations associated with it, is a similarly underutilized instrument in a lot of jazz music. And Jasper's really on a mission to try to uh, have it you know, have a melodic front role in the music. <laughs> and yes, I'm glad the accordion made the album as well, Maggie Ann. It's been, it's been a long time coming. Of course, uh, the first two albums I released were Piano Trio with no accordion, but I've been touring with the accordion for a number of years now. So anybody who knows me from being on the road and traveling knows that, uh, I always bring the accordion and always play some tunes on the accordion and they always ask me if I have anything recorded on the accordion and now I can say I do and this album is very much an accordion feature in a lot of ways. I think at least six out of the ten tracks have the accordion, maybe seven. And uh, I thought about the orchestration of this group in terms of the blend of the accordion with the horns. You heard that on... Uh, this last track where the trumpet, the bass clarinet, and uh, two harmonies in the accordion create a four-part chord through the uh, B sections. So I'm really glad and uh, I'm super excited that this album is out at this point. Beautiful. We're going to go on to Philadelphia. This is another non-original. This is an arrangement and I get to introduce the last special guest that we haven't heard from yet and that is my good friend Sam Chess who is a trombonist who went to Juilliard with me. Amazing player who has a very distinctive tone among people in our age group. You know he has a very what one might consider an old school vibrato, wide vibrato, very round, rich tone on the trombone. One of my favorite players. And uh, this is a song that I've always loved. Always loved playing with the trio as well. But as I was workshopping these pieces in the years, really, leading up to the recording, uh, I had a session where he came over and he played this melody. And I just thought, whenever this album gets made, I want to make sure that I get him into the studio to record this melody. So you'll hear from Sam on trombone. You'll also hear some from Jasper on the melody. And you'll also hear solos by me on piano and Rafael Rosa on guitar. This is by Neil Young. It's called Philadelphia.
Philadelphia. Neil Young. I mean, what do you say? Just an absolute beautiful composition. And I, I always thought that it, it sounded really in place as a jazz ballad. I, I, I don't know uh, when I first had that thought, but, you know, it's a really cool form to improvise on. It has these really interesting changes in the, the lyrics and the melody are just so evocative and Sam and Jasper just kill it in terms of uh, interpreting that melody. You know, uh, really so lucky to have these musicians on. And while I'm on the topic of the musicians, you're about to hear from almost all of them on this next piece. So I'd, I'd like to take one more time to mention all of their names. Uh, on Motif from Brahms and uh, on Somewhere You Heard from Jeremy Corrin on Piano. And uh, I'm, as I mentioned before, so happy that I get to play with my favorite pianist. And on Trumpet Throughout, you've heard Wayne Tucker, just incredible. On tenor saxophone and bass clarinet, one of my best friends in the world. I've been streaming a lot with him recently as well, Mr. Jasper Dutes. On guitar, the incredible Rafael Rosa, somebody who's so musical. The relationship between piano and guitar is always a relationship of not getting in each other's way, both big chordal instruments and he is always so sensitive as a musician and a company. Amazing. You've been hearing from me on piano and accordion. Uh, you've heard from the wonderful Marty Jaffe, who's going to be featured in the next composition that I wrote entitled Bright Above Us. He has a long bass solo. And really, Marty is someone I have known since the first year of college, one of my best friends. and. He and uh, Ben Zweig, the drummer, are my regular touring trio at this point. So I'm so lucky that I got to go on the road with them for three or four years, performing all the time, and then get into the studio and they've played all these songs so many times they know them inside out. You know, not many, not many people can say that they have uh, such a close relationship with a working band. So. Marty Jaffe on the bass, and my dear, dear friend, one of my best friends in the whole world, Mr. Ben Zweig, on the drums. We've been playing regular gigs with each other since before I went to college, and really have grown up together as musicians, and hopefully are still continuing to grow. So thank you all so much. And then you just heard from Sam Chess on trombone one more time who you're going to hear on this next one as part of the ensemble. And you'll also hear from Jake Chapman again on the vibraphone. Another one of my best friends. I mean, they're all some of my best friends in the world. So, you know, there's nobody in this band who I, I don't consider one of my dearest friends. But Jake and I were actually roommates in college and shared a very tiny room together in the second year of college. And so, you know, and then in the last two years of college, we were in the same suite. And so I, I know him probably better than just about anyone. <laughs> in any case, these are all the wonderful musicians that you're going to hear all of together on the next piece. I also overdubbed multiple accordion tracks and piano. I, I play the piano on this, so... It's a, in a, a, what is essentially a nine-person group on this next one. And this composition, Bright Above Us, is the one that dates back the farthest. I initially wrote it for my high school band as a kind of uh, last year project. And it's morphed more times than I can count over the years. It's uh, gone through changes of orchestration, instrumentation. I've pared it down. I've added different sections and... Uh, you know, it's, it's uh, been in many forms over the past 10 years, but I've finally got to record it on this album, and it feels very satisfying after so many years to put down a definitive track of this. Um, you're going to hear from Marty Jaffe on the bass, 
and also from Rafael Rosa again on the guitar solo. And this is Bright Above Us. Originally inspired, the title, um, the, the melody was inspired by a beloved family pet, Twinkle, that passed when I was writing this. And Bright Above Us, I imagine the twinkles of the stars in the sky. So if that, if that is a evocative image, right above us. <laughs>
right above us. All right. I. It's kind of an epic piece, so take a take a breath for a second. But I'll just uh, acknowledge some of these uh, comments. Absolutely, uh, Raphael's comping. Yeah, I mean, just one of the most sensitive guitarists I know. I mean, beautiful, beautiful. Thank you so much, Lucas, for the clapping hands. I knew what you meant. <laughs> Thanks so much. Thanks, Bruce, for that for that wonderful comment as well. Uh, I I really appreciate it and. Uh, I'm so glad that I got to kind of fulfill the epic vision of this song that I had. Uh, <laughs> oh, Julia, I'm so glad you got to tune in. Oh, man, this is so cool. Thank you so much. And uh, yeah, you heard it from the very beginning and probably multiple versions in between. So, uh, <laughs> oh, man, and this is, uh, yeah, I mean... You know, as, as these things are, these compositions continue to grow and develop. But thank you so much for tuning in and uh, for, for such kind words. Thank you. Thank you. And Maggie Ann, oh, yes. Well, we all know that uh, I'm a, I, I love melodies. <laughs> I mean, there are, there are many great ways to approach jazz, but for me, songs always live and die by the melody and I uh, you know always try to write songs that have a very uh, distinctive clear melody and base everything else around that so thank you so much for that wonderful compliment there are two more songs on the album but uh, I thanked all the musicians and went through them individually but now I want to take a quick opportunity to thank other people who are involved with this album. First, of course, all the people at Samurai Hotel, really comfortable recording studio in Queens, great vibes. Uh, they have a big uh, kind of replica in acoustic wooden blocks of the Great Wave Hokusai, which I love. A uh, huge thanks to to Mike Marciano and Max Ross who helped with the tracking on this and helped have the session run smoothly. And as far as the album art is concerned, I'm going to see if I can pull this up right now. Uh, it's going to take me a second, but uh, the one uh, the one image that you haven't seen as these tracks have been playing are uh, is the inside left of the album and that was a photo that was taken by a dear friend from Italy Francesco Moretti so here's the uh, inside left <laughs> so I wanted to pull that up just to thank Francesco for this beautiful photo and for letting me use this for the album <laughs> Hope you're watching, but if you're not, maybe you'll see it on the uh, re replay. <laughs> Great. And then, most importantly, I have three people to thank that without whom this album would not exist. And those are my family, who I want to thank individually. First, my mom, who is... You know, in addition, I said, you know, she took it, these beautiful photos for the album and edited all of it and helped with the graphic design. But much more importantly than that, uh, she's been there since the very beginning. You know, when I was five years old, suggesting I get piano lessons, later on introducing me to jazz and, uh, you know, being the first person that I always talk to about new music and, you know, what I'm doing, what I'm thinking, I, uh, you know, I've, uh, she's seen every step of my musical development and it's so just beautiful to have somebody there my whole life to, to help me on this journey. So thank you to my mom. And similarly to my dad, who you've seen comment multiple times here, just one of, I mean, I, I really couldn't, 
ask for a more enthusiastic and supportive uh, follower of everything in my musical career. Uh, you know, my dad usually knows about reviews before I do <laughs> and sends them to me and is always uh, keeping track of everything. Sometimes he knows more about the gigs I'm going to do than I do, too. He's, uh, you know, just such an incredible supporter. So thank you. Huge thanks. And then, of course, my brother, who I've already mentioned, did pretty much everything on this album. I mean, but from the tracking to the mixing and mastering, helping with the graphic design, taking the photo inside, helping with song titles, and he's heard and given advice on so many of these compositions throughout the years, you know, and he's really been there at every moment too, and it's probably the number one person I bounce ideas off of when I'm struggling and figure out, you know, is this working? I am feel so indebted to him on all of these albums, not only because he makes them sound absolutely incredible, and he does. I mean, the sound quality on these albums is beyond anything I could possibly hope for and expect. So thank you so much for that. But also because I know that when I go in the recording studio, he's going to be in the booth. And I know that if I ever have questions about, was, was that the good take? What did you hear on that? Did you hear something I didn't? He's going to be investing himself 100% in the music and, you know, dedicate himself just as much as I am in making this product as good as it can be. And that is something I can never take for granted. So to my mom, my dad, and my brother, thank you all so much for helping me do what I do. And uh, I hope I didn't embarrass all of you too much, but <laughs> I, I, I really, I, I have just so much gratitude and so much love. So those are the thanks that are due. And, you know, there are many more thanks that haven't been said. I mean, you know, everybody who's helped me along the way. Thank you all so much. And thank you to all of you for tuning in and for your support. You know, I make this music because I love doing it, but just as importantly, I make it to be able to share it with people, share it with people I care about and love. And uh, I uh, hope that... <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> He's got jokes, too. <laughs> oh, I love you, dude. All right. Um, but yeah, I, I make this music to be able to share with all of you and to be able to, uh, <laughs> and to be able to have a shared musical experience together. I always tell my audiences in person that, uh, they're just as much part of creating the music as I am because their energy and their responses and their engagement help shape the music. This is an improvised music, so the music is different every time that we play it. And it's really changed by where we are and what the setting is and how people are responding. And the more engaged the audience is, the easier our job is. It's just the, the most fun thing in the world to feel like I am have this musical connection with, uh, with the people who enjoy my music and... Uh, uh, share this time for me. So thank you all so much. All right. I've talked a lot <laughs> Booth seats are the best seats. I love that. <laughs> that is true <laughs> I've talked a lot, but let's continue on with the last two tracks and thank you all again so much uh, This next one is the last original composition uh, I kind of intended it as a little bit of a jam, you know, this is one that a lot of people get a piece of uh, Wayne solos on it, Jasper solos on it, I solo on accordion, Raphael solos, and uh, Zweig, Ben Zweig solos. I call him Zweig because we're both named Ben, so that's a reflex. <laughs> but Ben Zweig solos on it as well, drum solo at the end. And it's uh, an unapologetically uh, straight ahead blues, <laughs> which is, uh, you know, of course, much of this uh, album is inspired by world music. There's some modern contemporary jazz influences, but I always am rooted in straight ahead jazz. That's what I 
kind of grew up with and where my heart is always going to be, at least in part. So hope you enjoy this one, a kind of blues called Laughing on the Inside. <laughs>
Jasper there with that low bass clarinet note at the very end. <sighs> All right. Laughing on the inside. I told the guys on that to try to make the solo section sound like one person soloing. <laughs> so we would kind of trade the solo to the next person, kind of pass it along. Uh, and I kind of, I love that they were into it. And I, I heard it on the ending too, you know. I, I'm so lucky to have musicians that just know how to get in and out and not get in each other's way. They're amazing. Thank you once again to all of them. And thank you so much, Maggie Ann and Lynn and Dad for all the amazing kind words. Yes, Dad mentions uh, that there's also a live version of that from the most recent show of the group at the Catano that is on my YouTube channel. Some of you are on my YouTube channel right now, so uh, <laughs> you know that there's uh, a number of uh, live concert recordings on there, including takes of somewhere, this tune, Laughing on the Inside, as well as two tracks, uh, uh, Blue Water and The Bell from Europe that aren't on this album, but are arranged for this group that were recorded live at the Catano when we did our show there, kind of a pre-release concert uh, in February. So uh, if you want to hear more after this, there's one more song left, but if you want to hear more after this, feel free to check out the YouTube uh, channel. If you follow me on Facebook, you'll also see updates about live shows. And if you want to listen to the album again after this, <laughs> it's up on all the streaming websites. And if you want to purchase it, it's available in physical copy from Amazon, as well as in digital format on Amazon, on iTunes slash Apple Music, and uh, many other sources. Or you could even message me if you want a physical copy uh, to purchase from me directly, and I'm happy to sign it for you maybe if you would like so <laughs> that's uh that's uh, the obligatory spiel about the album but i'm so grateful that i could have this virtual launch with all of you huge thanks to everybody i've already thanked and to all of you again for joining and thank you again, Bruce, for such wonderful uh, kindness. And also to Lori, if you're listening, I saw you shared this. Thank you so much. Y'all are wonderful supporters. So many of you are such wonderful supporters. I'm very lucky to have you all here. Beautiful. The last song is uh, bringing us out on a mellow note. There's no improvisation on this. This is a note-for-note -note transcription of an arrangement from a Bulgarian choral group. Uh, the album is called Les Mystères des Voix Bulgares. And uh, it's a very famous Bulgarian choral group that was active in the 80s and 90s. Sumi, so good to see you. Oh, thanks for joining. Thanks for tuning in. Um, and uh, this is one of my favorite arrangements. The Bulgarian Women's Choir, they're known for having these very tight harmonies, notes that are very close together, stacked on top of each other, very dense and complex. I mean, it's quite an amazing sound. And they also project their voices in a more nasal way that uh, gets these different overtones. So to try to capture that, we did an arrangement I transcribed from the album, and I assigned the different parts to different instruments. So. Jasper, being the amazing player that he is, I originally thought maybe he'd play this on soprano saxophone, and he ended up playing the melody in the same register on bass clarinet, which is amazing. I don't think too many people uh, can do that in the world. <laughs> so you're going to hear Jasper on the main melody line. You'll also hear me on the accordion. Wayne is playing one of the parts on trumpet, and Marty is bowing the bass. And our dear drummer, Ben Zweig, conducted us in the studio. He is a man of many talents, so he kept it all together. Hope you enjoy this. This is called Is Poved, and subtitled on the original recording, Confessions. <laughs>
is Paved Confessions. <laughs> it is true, the bass clarinet really does have the Bulgarian vocal tone, especially with the inflections Jasper puts on it. And it's a real testament to these musicians that Jasper already knew this Bulgarian music really well <laughs> before I even suggested doing it. And he was like, oh, I know exactly how to get that sound. And he listened to it and really uh, dug into it. I mean, I, <laughs> you know, it takes a long time to find the musicians that really uh, share a shared kind of view of the, the music world in terms of having such a wide variety of interests as uh, all of the musicians on this album do. And I'm so lucky to have found them, to find people that are willing to go all these different places. It's true. Uh, Leonard Bernstein, Neil Young, and the Bulgarian choir music is probably... Uh, this might be the first album, but maybe it won't be the last. Who knows? <laughs> In any case, really appreciate you all so much. Thank you again to everyone who's joined. This has been an absolute pleasure for me to share this music with you in this format. And I'm really looking forward to sharing it live once uh, we're able to get the full band together live. Uh, Thank you so much, Dan. It means so much. <laughs> uh, as I mentioned earlier, there is in the works a live CD release celebration where we'll get the band together and perform some of the tracks from this record. I'm in the process of talking to a wonderful jazz club in New York called Smalls, and we're getting a date in December. So uh, thank you and stay tuned for that and i'm excited really excited but in the meantime this is uh such a joyous occasion thank you all for staying through the whole thing listening to the whole album with me i have so much love for all of you all over the world who are tuning in and uh i'm so excited that this album is now officially in the world and i can share it and point people to it so Thank you all so much again. There's a lot of thanks, but I'm, I'm just so excited today. It's been just a wonderful day uh, getting reactions from people and hearing from people all over. So I really, I really appreciate it. And I, I am just so lucky. So thank you all so much. And I will see you on the next stream. For those who don't know, I think most of you are regulars, but for those who don't know, I do a live stream on a regular basis nowadays with this beautiful piano here, as well as uh, my trusty accordion. You know, even though I'm not playing on this stream, I still have them all with me here, you know. They're, they're my, they're my uh, partners in crime, so... Uh, <laughs> I uh, do this live stream series and uh, we were doing it every week during the summer and I took a break and recently I started it up again. So last Sunday was free improvisation with works of art. Uh, coming up, not two days from now, but a week and two days from now, I think that's October 25th, is another live stream. And I think for that one, I will be playing compositions that I am inspired by the lyrics of. So, uh, but that might change, but I think that's going to be the theme for now. But I'm theming all of them. I have all the schedule for the live streams on my website, and uh, I'm really excited that I still get an opportunity to connect with all of you virtually. So stay tuned for all of that. Thank you again for listening, and I will see you on the next stream or hopefully in person sometime soon. Y'all are the best. Take care, stay safe.